Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and we are in the middle of the small space series. We are counting down and today we're talking about issues that you may have with your small dining space. You may be living in an apartment or a studio with a teeny tiny dining area. You might also have a really small square space to work with. And what about those long and narrow dining rooms? The one thing that they all have in common they're a challenge for you to design. If you're still scratching your head and trying to figure out the best way to maximize your small dining room space, this video is for you. Let's talk about the five most common challenging conditions I see in small dining areas and share ways on how to effectively resolve them. If you have a tiny apartment or a studio space that you're dealing with, most likely you're looking to seat at least one to two people minimum. If you live alone, you'll need that additional seat for guests. The best location for a dining table is to find an empty wall and flank one end of the table up against it. You'll have three edges left to play with, which means you can seat at least three more people against this small table. If you have a window with a nice view, flank the square or rectangular table against the window. You can enjoy the view, hide the radiator, and free up more clearance for passageways. It's a win-win all around. If you only have a tiny corner with a passageway next to it, source a small table or even custom make an L-shaped bench to fit squarely in the space. If the corner is teeny tiny with two adjacent walls, you can source a white table so it disappears into your white walls and clear chairs that look almost invisible in the space. What if you have a small square room to work with for your dining area? The first step is to measure the room, the length, the width, times the height. Then subtract the clearances. A 36 inch aisle for a walkway or a passage is pretty typical. I share that information in the top dining room design mistakes. However, if you have a smaller space, a small home, a small apartment, 30 inch clearance can work. Source a dining table shape that is best supported by the shape of the room. If the shape of the room is square, a square or a round table works best. If the shape of the room is a rectangle, source a rectangle or oval table. The best round tables for small dining areas are leggy or a pedestal type with one single table base Glass tabletops and surfaces are great for dining tables since they reflect a lot of light either from synthetic light or natural daylight that streams through your space
If you have a smaller dining table, always look to source identical chairs. The repetition of styles and shapes will make the dining chairs appear as if they're one unit. If you have six or more chairs, then clearly your dining area isn't all that small. Source armless side chairs to fit more people around the table. If you have room for a console or a buffet, why not create a fabulous focal point for your dining room? If you have a narrow dining room, the biggest issue is that you don't have that clearance for passageways. After you subtract the 36 inches on both sides so that the dining chairs can easily pull out from the table and still have ample room to walk around, you might not even have enough space left for a table. You might even only have 18 inches or 24 inches left. The best solution for a narrow dining room is to source a built-in bench, banquette, or a slim bench. When would you specify this type of built-in? A built-in banquette is perfect when you don't have the clearance for walkways. When the back of the banquette is pushed up against a wall, you just saved yourself 36 inches of clearance space. Source a banquette when you have a tiny corner with a passage to a hallway or a door next to it. You would also source a banquette when you have a long and narrow room. I love built-in banquettes if you have bay windows with a niche or a beautiful window view that you want to take full advantage of. If you don't want to go the custom route, you can also source a slim bench, a settee, or even a smaller sofa anchored against a wall or a corner. If your small space doesn't have a separate dining room and you have an eat-in kitchen instead, here are some solutions. If you have an empty wall, try a single leaf tabletop with a simple leg for support.
If you can fit in a four top table, make it feel more spacious with a round table instead of a square or a rectangle. No sharp edges allow you to walk freely around the kitchen. If you have a small corner, take advantage of the space with a custom bench. I love this idea to incorporate the dining table into a cantilevered ledge or even above a waterfall island. The best designs are those that feel well thought out and fully integrated into the design of the kitchen. What if you have an open plan dining room that is in between the kitchen and the living area? You always wanna measure the space you have allotted and check for the 36 inch minimum clearance you need around the perimeter. 30 inches will do now that you understand the 36 inch minimum rule. Make sure you optimize the views. Source round tables so chairs can be placed in any direction. If you have a square table, you're really forced to place a chair right in front of each edge. Round tables are simply easier to maneuver and walk around. If your open plan dining space is a part of an eat-in kitchen, one edge of the table could be flanked against the wall. You can still seat at least five people and it opens up the walkway behind the fifth chair for passage into the adjacent living room. Get inspired by these small dining spaces and create something custom to fit your lifestyle, aesthetic, and needs. Remember that the function of the dining room is paramount to its success. So the table size, the table shape, and the amount of people that can fit around it is something that you should think about from the get-go. If your dining area works as a makeshift work from home office, definitely check out my top design mistakes for the dining room. I share a lot of tips on how you can convert your dining area into a work from home situation. If you like this type of content and you're enjoying the small space series so far, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if you have any questions about your small dining area that I did not cover in this video. I would love to help you out and find some solutions that will work for you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that little notification bell to get notified of new videos that we roll out every Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.